Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the deductibility of business expenditure, which is which is called business deductions. Business deductions, they must be ordinary and necessary as well as reasonable. This is an important topic in the real world because in the real world, businesses like deductions. Now you might be saying, but deduction incur cost. Why do we like to incur additional cost? The reason is as your cost, as your deduction, if you can take more deduction, your tax bill goes down. So you want to earn or you want to qualify for any business deduction that's out there because you will be able to reduce your tax bill. And the IRS, they might look at your business deduction as a form of audit. So they, they might want to look at your business deduction, whether they are acceptable or not. Now, the IRS has specific guidelines for what is considered deductible for business expense. But the guidelines are not clear cut. The expense must be ordinary and necessary. Also, the compensating for services, whatever you pay for services, must be reasonable. And this is where the term ordinary and necessary and reasonable, those three terms. So in this session, we will try to explain what does the IRS means by those three terms when it comes to business deductions, because business deductions are good. Businesses like deductions. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's go ahead and start with the term ordinary. What is, what is, what is ordinary? Well, an ordinary expense, it's, it's one that is common. They don't tell you exactly what type of expense. They, just, they give you a definition that's common and accepted in your trade or business. So what's common and accepted in your trade and business may not be common and expected in another trade of business. For example, you might, for example, have a subscription for YouTube. Why? Because part of your business is you, you're a YouTuber. Well, you want to have some additional features of YouTube, if that's your business. If you are in the construction business, a subscription to YouTube and you don't use YouTube may not be an ordinary type of business for you. So it all depends on your business. It's an expense that would not be out of place or unusual to find out in that type of business that you are running. Simply put, it's normal, usual, and customary. Now, the, the expense that you incur does not have to be incurred on a regular basis or frequently. So it doesn't have to be incurred all the time. As long as it's normal, usual, acceptable for your type of business, the other indication, if other businesses also incur the same type of business, then it's considered ordinary. So how would the IRS look at this? Well, if you're incurring this business, they would look at similar businesses. If similar businesses are incurring the same type of expense, then this expense is considered ordinary and therefore it meets the ordinary. For example, if you own a restaurant, expenses for cooking ingredient, cleaning supplies for the kitchen, uniform for your staff are ordinary expenses because they are typical and accepted in the restaurant industry. This is what an ordinary is, an example of an ordinary, something that you would use in your trade of in, in your trade and business. The second component of this is ordinary and necessary. What is necessary? Necessary is a helpful an appropriate expense for your trade or business. What does, that, what does that mean, helpful and appropriate? Now, it doesn't have to be absolutely critical, okay, to be considered helpful and appropriate, to be considered necessary. It doesn't have to be indispensable to be considered necessary. As long as a prudent business person incur that, that, that expense, then it's necessary. As long as a business person, another business person, they may not, but if they do it, it is necessary. What could be an example? Now, let's assume you have a business. Can you run your business without advertising? Sure, you can run your business without spending $1 on advertising. So advertising cost for your business would be considered necessary because even though your business could technically operate without advertising, you don't have to advertise, but it's considered helpful and appropriate to advertise to bring customers. So that's what necessary is. 
Another example, you could be a graphic designer or in the graphic design business. So a necessary expense would be the purchase of graphic design software. Well, we can say, well, you, you really don't need the software because theoretically you can work with a pencil and a paper. Well, using a professional software though is necessary because it's more efficient and standard in your industry. So it's necessary because you can live without it, but it's helpful for your business. It's helpful and appropriate. Therefore, it's considered necessary. Now, the third condition is, is reasonable. They have, it has to be ordinary and necessary. Then the word reasonable. Again, the word reasonable is not defined, but implied that the expense cannot be excessive. It cannot be too much. Okay, and would be acknowledged as reasonable by peers in the same industry. So simply put, if you run this number by someone in your business and in a similar business of yours, if, if, if they think it's reasonable for what you paid for your services, then it's reasonable. So it's not something that's, it's hard to kind of judge. The IRS would generally look at whether the cost would seem reasonable to a disinterested third party. How would they know whether, whether it's reasonable or not? If a third party pay for this, another party pay for the same service, the same amount, then that's considered reasonable. Now, bear in mind, bear in mind, if the transaction is between related party transaction, what does that mean? It means it's between the owner of the business and the business itself. So for example, you have an S corporation, you have the owners, they have the owners have rental property. Now the owners are renting the property to the S corporation. Well, you have to look at this a little bit more, a uh, little bit more closer because there's a related party. When there's a related party transaction, the IRS will open their eyes a little bit further. At the end of the day, you have to look at it from a third party perspective. Will the third party pay for this, pay for the service this much? Again, if the expense appear to be excessive or out of line with what would be typically expected in your industry, it will be deemed unreasonable. And what would happen if it's deem deemed unreasonable? Let's assume you're paying rent worth of $8,000 per month, but the fair market value should be $5,000. Let's assume that's the case or $4,000 because they look in your area and, and, and the most expensive rental uh, office that you're using is $5,000. Why are you paying yourself $8,000? Why you're paying maybe that you own the rental property or your friend or your boyfriend, girlfriend, relative. Well, if that's the case, it's a related party transaction and it's not reasonable. So they will just basically say, you, you, we cannot take the five, you cannot take the 8,000. You have to consider 3,000. Another example would be if you're on a small, small business, home-based business and decide to host a meeting at a high-end luxury resort, the IRS might determine that the cost is excessive and not reasonable for a business, not reasonable business expense. If you hosted this meeting at a local office shop or renting a modest conference room, it would be considered reasonable. Now, at the end of the day, bear in mind, it's subject to interpretation and assessed case by case basis. So it's not like may, maybe, maybe let's assume you are a small business, but you decided to host this in a high end luxury result, uh, luxury resor resort. Well, the IRS would say, well, hold on a second. That's not reasonable. You'd say, look, I am trying to attract high-end client. I'm changing my client base. I want to show a different image of the company. Well, then it becomes reasonable. So it's case by case. There is no answer for these ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Ordinary and necessary, it's easy because you could look at other businesses. Whether it's reasonable or not, it gets a little bit complicated, especially when you have related party transactions involved. The best way is to take a look at an example to illustrate these concepts. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Adam, who works independently as a tax lawyer, so he's an attorney, along his employee Sue, participate in a tax conference in Las Vegas hosted by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant. Now, if you are, an, if you are not a student member of this organization, I suggest you do so. And if you're not a member of your state society, whatever, for example, I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm a member of the PI CPA. If you're in New Jersey, you want to make sure you join the New Jersey CPA Society. So make sure you do that. But always the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant. So they are having a conference in Las Vegas. He's a tax attorney. And they paid the following. Adam paid the registration fee for the AI CPA conference, 1200 It's a three-day three -day conference. And, and he paid for Sue, 1200 Sue is his employee. They flew from Philadelphia to Nevada, to Las Vegas, Nevada. Adam paid 650, Sue paid 400. Maybe he traveled first class, Sue traveled regular class, or they paid, or they 
or they bought the ticket at a different time. Uber from the airport and from the air from the uh, airport to the hotel, eighty dollars. Lodging in Las Vegas, Adam eight hundred, Sue five hundred and fifty. Okay, they stayed in a different hotel or maybe Adam upgraded. It does not matter. Assuming, and we're going to be assuming, all these amounts are reasonable. Which one of these amounts is considered taxable? Taxable, not taxable, deductible for for Adam's tax office. Well, we're going to assume because he's a tax lawyer. He wants to learn more about accounting. So registration fee for Adam is deductible. It's necessary, ordinary. Maybe it's also as a tax lawyer, they may be getting continuous professional education, CPE credit. They may need it for that, even required, not only necessary and ordinary, it might be required. For Sue, Adam wants Sue to learn more about the business. That's ordinary and necessary. Can they get to Las Vegas? Can they get to Nevada without flying? Well, they can drive. That's another option, but they took a plane. Well, if they drove, it's going to take them a few days to, to get there. Therefore, that's even normal, necessary, and it, you know, it costs 650 It might cost up to $1,000. The flight, that's also deductible. Ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Uber, $80. Again, you need to get from the airport to the hotel, and maybe from the hotel to the conference. Maybe the conference inside the hotel. It doesn't really matter. Uber is reasonable. Lodging, you want to stay there. Okay, 800 for Adam, 554 So we're going to assume these are reasonable. Let's assume Adam wanted to stay in the Bellagio, and Adam paid you know, $7,000. Well, the IRS might 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 look into this. Well, it might be not reasonable. Okay, it may not be reasonable. Or Adam might have have paid seven thousand, but that weekend, those were the market prices, so Adam had no choice. So notice, even if we go from eight hundred to seven thousand, would that be reasonable or not? Given the circumstances for that weekend, maybe that weekend there was a some, you know, important event con uh, concert, and all the hotels were fold fold. And the prices were skyrocket. And if he paid seven thousand, that's under the circumstances that is reasonable. That is reasonable, assuming he did not have any other alternative. So this is what we mean by ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. Again, it's case by case, but you need to have a good idea about what does that term mean. Because business deduction, to take a deduction, it means you are lowering your taxes. When you lower your taxes, businesses like to lower their taxes. The government don't like this. So they tell you it's ordinary, necessary, and reasonable. They keep it vague. For what purpose? They can always question you. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, well, whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student. Look at additional MCQs, true-false, resources that's going to help you understand these concepts and get ready for the exam. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.